I mean, when you look at it, Simon, some some of these uh, nations have punched above their weight. It, I, I just wonder if it, it does it show us that having the best generation of players as Belgium apparently reportedly did have accounts for nothing when it comes to an international tournament like this. Well, the question is 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 billed as are they a fake number one team and. Surely you can only be a number one team if you actually win things. Yes. Yeah. Now they don't win things. I've never been. I like him. I think he's a very personable guy. But I don't look at Roberto Martinez as a perennial winner. I look at the group of Belgian players. They choked in 2016. Mm. Yes. Okay. They came up against a very good French side in another tournament, and they've come out in this game. They weren't compelling or convincing against the Portuguese no. in that game. And there's nothing. I didn't go into this tournament thinking Belgium were going to win it. I thought Belgium would be a threat mm. and that there would be a difficult team to play against. Mm. And if you talk to most people, including uh, Andy Brasso and people that we have here that are yeah, studying yeah. these teams on a regular basis, yeah. he didn't tip the Belgians because ultimately this, no this notion that somehow their ranking has got them to be the number one team in the world belies the fact that actually they haven't won anything. And, to, and surely to be a number one, you have to win things. So I think... As, as, as sort of robust as the question is and brutal as it is, are they a fake number one side? Well, ye yes, they are because they don't win things. I know Danny will say that, well, they, they'll, they'll have a, a better group of players, perhaps. The two centre-halves are not getting any younger, so they won't be around. And I'm not seeing a body of, work, yeah. body of work behind them that's going to replace them instantaneously. You know, there's a couple of players that we could think about that may go into those positions. But I think they've had their moment and their moment got them to number one in the FIFA rankings and won nothing. What does that mean? But I was told they're the best in the world. Well, they're well, one actually of. They're not. One, they're one of because it's based on statistics which go back years since he's taken the job. It just so happens the only games he's lost have been in big tournaments. But I think the one thing, um, it would be silly to write them off, especially with the World Cup only being a year away. You know, because we've had the delay in the Euros, we're only a year off. Most of those players will be fine to play in the World Cup next year. So they've got another opportunity. Um, but tournament football, you need everything to go your way. Um you know, Hazard only had one game on the pitch, didn't he? Then he was injured. De Bruyne started the tournament injured and had to work his way in. Witzel had been, been their main midfielder for nearly a decade, injured. Had to work his way into the into the team and get his fitness by playing. Yeah. Um, even the game they went out, really. Lukaku, who's been sensational this season, missed a couple of guilt-edged chances, didn't he? You know, you're talking... Th those little thin lines I'm talking about, those tiny moments in games that... that that make you a success or not. Overall, when you watch Belgium the last few years, you have to say they're a good side. They're one of the best teams. But they're a good because side. Because the numbers say they are. But they went into but, this rank but number they've one. They've choked it in the you know the Welsh game especially. The Brazil game, uh, sorry, the France game, I have to say, in the World Cup, was one of the best games I've seen live in terms of quality. From a defensive aspect and attacking aspect from the French. Defensively, second half, they were superb. And I'm not sure the Belgians could have done much more. So they were unlucky in Russia. And, and this time, you know, I think they beat Portugal, didn't they? Which is a hell of a side. Beat them, defended well, looked comfortable and confident. And then they've gone into that game against Italy. Italy have scored a, one, one goal. Well, both goals were superb, but one in particular, superb goal. Lukaku's missed a couple of chances and they're out. Mm. And all of a sudden it's like, well, are they, are they overhyped? No, they're a wonderful side. And you wouldn't want to have to play them now in the semis of the final. Thank God they've gone out. But but, but when, when you look at the question itself, though, Danny, and I know it sounds harsh, but are they a fake best team in the world? They're number one ranked and have been for a well, while. No, I've never they been a big are fan at the of, top of the tree. I've never been a big fan of the rankings. But yeah, I mean, you why would they be able French when the French beat them and won the World Cup? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. I, I'm you know the top five teams in the world. They play each other. Every week for the next 10 weeks, you'd have a 50-50 split on results, I, I would guess. So you think injuries get an awful lot to do with it? To keep people at key times? I think so. Yeah, yeah you look at... If, if, if Belgium had gone into this with everybody fit and flying, mm. I think we might have seen a different result against but, uh, Italy, but we'll never know. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.